So, can this RC bike jump all of these? You better watch. Hi guys, in this video I brush off the Sky RC SR5 rear wheel drive gyro driven motorbike. So as I said in the intro, I'm going to, uh, I bought this RC uh, motorbike probably about four or five years ago. I uh, very rarely use it. I don't know why that is. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's just anyone who knows RC motorbikes, they're just a different kettle of fish to drive and to ride. Uh, you know, you can go out and you can grab your X-Max or your lossy db and just bash it, this, that and the other. RC bikes are a little bit more uh, technical uh, and in this video I'm going to kind of try and explain to you how these these bikes work as opposed to just the twist and throttle and turn of the the uh, controller for trucks these are a complete different cat of fish so keep tuned and I'll get into the details so starting at the front of the bike just like a miniature bike this is exactly the same, just a scaled down version of a proper motorbike. Uh, so we're starting at the front. We've got these lovely uh, front forks. Now these are actually all uh, oil filled. So you can change the oil in them. You can't set the damp in this, that and the other. But you can see they're really, uh, really like the real thing. Now... You suppose you can change the oil. You can screw the tops off and fill them with, put a thicker viscosity of oil in there, shock oil, so that it makes it a little bit more uh, bouncy, I suppose. Uh, whereas this is quite soft, so when you're going over the bumps, it's actually really damp in the damp in the ride. And as you say, these are really quite hard to steer. And if the front is too hard, as opposed to dampening the bumps, you'll just be bouncing off it and making it even more harder. So I really recommend don't go messing with the shock oil in the front forks. Leave it as is. So basically, moving up, crikey, you can hear the rain. What else can we do but be in the shed and talk our seas as opposed to be out in that horrible rain? Oh, wherever you are in the world, England, Jersey is the worst at the moment for the weather. But hey-ho, I digress. So what we've also got in here, we've actually got a... I think it's a 160 mil front wheel and a 150 uh, back back wheel. And the back wheel is this is this is free flowing, nice and smooth. But the secret to an RC so car, before I get into into the detail of how you steer these and how you drive them, this that and the other, let's have a little quick overlook over the the bike itself. So basically, it's made by a company called uh, Sky RC. And this is the model, it is basically the uh, SR5. Uh, there were predecessors to it, but as, as over time, they've, you know, they've just got better, this, that, the gyros have got better, the body shells, the rider, this, that, and the other. And I don't know whether you remember, a few years ago, Anderson, they used to make a, a thing called the M5. It's funny enough, I used to have one. And that was also a motorbike. But the rider was actually just like uh, Lexan, so it was hollow and it just brake easy. Whereas on the Sky RC, this is an actual, like it's like an action man. If uh, I've got the uh, Savage ATV there with the same kind of rider, 
if I just kind of pull him up. There you go, if you can see him. That's exactly the same. It's a real kind of rider, the same, look like brothers. But, uh, so it's actually a real good quality. Let me put that down, back down. <clears throat> yeah, so the rider is actually solid. And getting into detail on the bike, it's actually a real beautiful bit of kit. So uh, let's go and have a look what's underneath the, uh, the rider and see what else we get. So moving on from the forks, hopefully you can still see this, uh, which I've just talked about. The chassis is actually a really beautiful anodized red, cherry red aluminium frame. And it goes all around the bike. So it's really, really made well. And at the bottom, you can see this is actually your battery tray. So on the inside, that's where you fit your battery and this, that and the other. Now, this car, this car, what am I talking about? This bike can actually run uh, 2 and 3S lipo. Now, for a single wheel, which is 150 millimeters tall, that is an awful lot of power. I gen generally try to run this bike on a 2S. 3, 3S is really uncontrollable. It, it wheelies, it flips, and I know I keep going on about the handling of this, but unless you've really had a go on, a, on an RC bike, you, will un you won't understand what I'm talking about. But if you have, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, about counter steering and not being too heavy handed on the throttle as well. So this does take quite a lot to get used to, but the fun factor of them. So as well as the is, uh, oil field front shocks, we have in the back, we also have a spring uh, shock which is also oil fed so you get that nice smooth action so obviously when you're going over bumps you're getting two types you're getting the suspension and the dampening from the forks and also the suspension from underneath the seat which gives you the you know the bounding like that which makes the ride nice you can also again change that for a higher viscosity oil in there but like i said about the front it's for me it's just going to be bouncing everywhere you need you need that damping effect so moving on to the side, uh, I've said all about the uh, nice anodized alloy chassis. Uh, you've also got a real life chain. Now this isn't a plastic chain. This is actually a miniature uh, bike chain. And so it's all got individual links and you can basically shorten and uh, lengthen this by changing the actual the spaces in the back there. So once you, once your chain does start to stretch, you know, you don't need to rebuy a new one. You can just insert a slightly longer with the hole move more to the back. And it just put the tension back on your chain a bit. So anybody knows that rides a bike, when the chain is stretched or too loose, you get a horrible rattly clackety kind of sound on, on the bike. So so that's the, uh, the chassis part of it. Now, the brains of this operation, it's running on a 540 size uh, brushless leopard motor and it's basically a 3200 kV motor so it's a real good uh, little punchy motor and don't don't forget it's just rear wheel single one wheel drive so that's a lot of power going into that uh, that is then coupled up from the motor it is fitted with a 60 amp ESC which enables you to run either the 2S or the 3S. So how does well. this stay straight and in a straight line when you're actually riding it. Uh, basically, in the back here, you have a system called shorthand, an ESSS, which is an elect electrical stabilized system. And what that means, short and curl is, is in this wheel is actually an electronic gyro. Now the Anderson uh, M5, uh, bike that you, I think it was Schumacher made, you used to have to uh, thr throttle and spin up the back wheel to get the gyro moving. This actually does it electronically. Now, what I shall do, I shall start up the, uh, the gyro for you so you can actually hear it and uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'll just start up the gyro for you so that you can actually see. Now it will make a bit of noise, so I, I apologize about that. And especially that we're in the shed as well, you can, uh, it's probably gonna sound even louder. So running on it, just a 2S hard cell, which flops inside of your 
and I can get it in there like so fits nice and comfortably inside there just feed the balance lead to the side like so and then close it up and there is a little clip here somewhere but I think I may well have dropped it on the floor but it doesn't matter the idea is is what you're going to see how the gyro works so now if you listen to it this is just the gyro starting now as you can see it's getting faster and faster and faster and faster now what that basically is is a weight spinning inside a cage that spins so 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 fast it actually keeps it upright and the funny thing is is when the gyro is actually on full torque you can actually feel like that if you've ever spun a wheel on a bike in between your hands and tried to turn it that that's ex it's really hard to, 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 to turn it now you know and that is the gyro effect which actually keeps this uh, bike which keeps the bike uh, going in a straight line. So the uh, transmitter that you get, it's nothing special. It's just the Sky RC uh, transmitter. Uh, you've got all your normal bits and bobs. You've got your trim, you've got your steering trim, you've got throttle trims, uh, you've got gyro trim actually. So uh, that must make it, you know, you'll be able to program the gyro to actually be less, uh, useful so that it makes it a little bit more wobbly and less gyro impact uh, and that's pretty much it so very simple controller uh, now while we're on the controller I'm going to plug this back in it may weigh, be a bit loud and I should turn it on here so now to actually ride or drive an RC bike everything's backwards on an RC car when you turn left, you go left. When you turn right, you go right. But for an RC bike, what you have to do, this is really bizarre, you have to steer opposite. So basically if I'm, oh, I need to turn this on. So basically, sorry, the gyro, I can't help the noise of the gyro guys. So you just have to work with me on this. Maybe I can put it that way, it won't be so bad. So basically the steering's the same, you see? Oi. We're going left and right with the steering. So what you have to do is when you're going in a straight line, you can't just turn right like that. So what you have to do, you have to go flip it to get the bike to turn over and then drop it to drop it in like that. And then as soon as it's dropped in, then you start steering. Sounds really complicated, but I shall show you on a running video exactly what I'm talking about. So basically, to actually get it to turn in, you turn it in when it's fallen over, then you opposite steer to actually make it steer and go right. So you've got to think opposite all the time because otherwise without, without making that little correction to drop it in, it doesn't steer. So I have the Traxxas Summit 1.8, the 1.8 Savage ATV, Traxxas X-Max 1.5. Lossy DBLXE brushless 1.5 and the Traxxas Spartan 6S 1.5 brushless boat. Can we clear it? So I hope you enjoyed that little bash with this uh, SR5. Uh, great little bit of kit, completely different to any RC, handling this, that and the other, but that's what makes it 
fun. RC should be fun and different all the time. If they were all the same, it'd just be boring. So, okay, guys, as always, like, thumbs up, subscribe, any comment, fill them in in the box. See you next time. Boop.